Welcome to Orthodox Christian Theology. This is Craig Trulia, and with me today is Father Roman. Father, how are we doing? All nice. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's a morning in Cambodia. Morning in Cambodia. Saturday morning. You should have went for coffee where I went to, to get coffee because you'd have too much energy. Uh, every morning in Cambodia, I have too much energy without coffee because the uh, uh, sun uh, wake up early in Cambodia. So how how do you have so much energy when you work into the evening? You don't eat dinner till nine o'clock at night. Oh. Uh, and it's not the first time I've seen that, by the way, Father. Last year, you did the same thing. You work nonstop. Hmm. You know, uh, I don't know. Because uh, during during all day, uh, have a lot of activities. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, maybe God's helped me. This is uh, God helped me because uh, when I have a lot of activities, uh, I cannot have a rest. So uh, maybe it's better, um, how to say it, Be better for me. Okay, better for me, a lot of activities and rest after this. Not like uh, I'm rest during the day. But it uh, we don't have, I don't have maybe some strict sc schedule. Because sometimes some something come, somebody come, uh, somebody come to the church. Yeah, every day it's a new day. I mean, now recently That's... you said someone almost died, went to the hospital, and you had to do emergency baptism. Uh, it was emergency baptism, but it not was in a hospital. It was uh, here in the church. It was so. It was situation like uh, after two days, only after two days. I uh, just uh, know that uh, son of our parishioners was near to death two days ago, and I asked, "Why you not? Why you not tell me?" So uh, we we was like in panic. In yeah, panic. yeah. So uh, and then okay, but and they uh, their uh, son and daughter uh, at that time not was baptized yet. So firstly, I I uh, ask another another priests. Maybe you need to baptize him now. I said yes, yes. And about daughter, it can be some preparation, like usually, but not about son. So yes, uh, it was the first case in my practice uh, that I uh, baptize him uh, quickly. Glory to God! You know, after holy baptism, he feel him uh, really better. I, I, I am the witness, and uh, his parents also witness. They said, "Wow, it's like a little he miracle." Did. Yes, it it was it was I saw that, but I I hope it, it uh, I don't have in my practice a lot of emergency cases. I I prefer well, so without too many depression. details. He was terminally ill before baptism. Yes, he was going to die. He sounds like he pulled through a little bit. He got a little better because he left the hospital, or was he still very sick? Yes, because before in and during also during holy baptism, he was like you know when when some. Uh, a uh, child uh, very uh, mm, not not active how passive like passive like somebody somebody sick without reaction oh. and after holy baptism he oh, start to run start to do something yeah it was how young was the child uh it his age was one year and a half yes like and i remember my son when he was exactly the same age mm. Tons of energy. You know Isaac, yeah. right? Tons of energy. And when he was, the first time he got really, really sick, it was like a different child, like this, yes. not moving yes. around. And you're saying this child, same way, baptized, kid was instantly better. Yes, yes, instantly better. When uh, my child was baptized at 39 days, which we did on the 40th day, we we're trying to get a particular priest to baptize him because he asked for that. And um, long story short, after the, he had trouble sleeping, he was crying all night. You know, he was a terror uh, to my wife. As you all know, they, newborns are very hard for the mothers, yes. right? <laughs> After baptism, whole new child, hmm? whole new child. It's 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 amazing. It's amazing. Um, so, just very briefly, um, could you tell the audience where are you from in Russia and where did you go to seminary? Uh, I am from a uh, little. Uh, some town uh, in uh, in the north of Russia near uh, the North Ocean, 
Uh, how, how close to the Arctic Circle is that town? It's after. It's a, north of the Arctic Circle. Yes, yes. Seven uh, degrees more. Uh, because uh, our... our uh, how many trees were up there? Uh, no one. Uh, no trees. Too far north. Uh, mm -hmm. okay. okay, some trees, some trees. Uh, uh, when I when I uh, see these old trees in my native town, this is like little trees. Okay, really little trees. And glory to God. Where there are like a lot of, I don't know what you call them in Russia, but like native people north of the tundra, they look like Eskimos or Inuits or Aleuts. I mean, what do they look? Are they just all Russians? <sighs> uh, in in my town, if you in the winter mm -hmm. come outside and uh only walking around uh 100 meters yeah, your uh how, how we call it in your, this one your eye your pupil uh this uh this hair uh, in uh, your eyebrows eyes. Uh, eyelashes 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 eyebrows all what you have Freeze. will be yes, frozen will be like <laughs> uh some yeah uh it will be a uh, white color okay for, for you so I, uh, I love I love my native town uh, and very very um, special how to say it very special climate mm -hmm. very very cold there but but uh, my my civil education was in Moscow yes and my uh, spiritual education uh, was in uh, Belgorod it's a okay. city near Ukraine okay so because we have some seminary there it's seminary with some missionary uh, missionary now among Americans because they don't. They only know Russia, Ukraine, because of war. Going to seminary is everyone. Uh, I'm Russian, you're Ukrainian. Like they're against each other, or is everyone brothers and sisters? Of course, of course, we are the same nation. Everybody know it. I think everybody know it because uh, uh, all what we have inside our uh, heads, it's uh, from from outside, like uh, some minds from evil spirit when it come outside and only after this we think oh this is my mind but this is not not your mind this is another mind from another side so oh. we we shouldn't think of ourselves as different nations we should think of ourselves as one people yes, yes. How, how about the russians and the cambodian people mm. uh we are if we said about nations with different nations but it's more interesting when you meet somebody uh, with another mentality, with another uh, culture and traditions and anything else, <laughs> it's very interesting. I think for, for me, it's any time very interesting, uh, especially first time when we come to Thailand and to Cambodia, it was very interesting because all different, all different climate, all, all. It, yeah. So this means um, uh, if we have uh, uh conversation together with with Khmer, with Khmer's, uh it, it can be uh, a lot of questions together so yeah very interesting okay so um we talked about your background i'm gonna say you're officially a real russian uh, uh yes, yes okay mm -hmm. and and you're a real orthodox priest uh, yes <laughs> the reason the reason i'm i'm framing it this way is because in the English language, there's a lot of confusion on what real orthodoxy is uh, because we in the West are really part of the mission field, just like Cambodians. Mm. We don't have orthodox Christianity. And just like um, you've seen the movie Silence, by the way, about the Roman Catholics in yes. Japan, right yeah. in silence. So even those who are orthodox, just like the Roman Catholics in Japan, they're, they're very affected by the society around them, mm -hmm. right? It affects our practices, our beliefs. And so I feel we lose our grounding in orthodoxy because we don't have an orthodox culture mm -hmm. at all. Doesn't mean Russia is very spiritual. Russia mm -hmm. has problems. Mm -hmm. Every country has problems. Like what Gre you've heard what happened in Greece recently, right? With gay marriage, right? There's problems with the societies. We're not saying everything's perfect in Greece or Russia or Turkmenistan or anywhere, right? Mm -hmm. But at least you have generations of orthodoxy. We don't have that in the West. So we're just bringing you as a humble priest to just talk very candidly about issues which might not seem scandalous to you, 
but us in the West, they're scandalous to us because of our culture. Mm -hmm. All right. And so we're going to um, go through my questions and audience questions. If you don't feel comfortable, just say, I'll have to think about it. And that's fine. We, can, <laughs> we can always type an answer later. Mm -hmm. um, and so let me ask the most basic, fundamental, important question. What must we do to be saved from damnation? So it's a question. Uh, this question is, uh, uh, how to say it? In theory, is a simple question. In theory. Because mm -hmm. uh, we, we all know that we must uh, uh, be in the Holy Church and follow, uh, follow uh, God's law, which we can see in, in the Holy Church. Uh, I mean, or Orthodox churches, which we have uh, local Orthodox Church 16 in, in this moment. So, yeah, this question, uh, in, in theory, very simple. We must only uh, live with our God. Uh, we have a theory, like right faith, correct faith, because if we don't have correct faith, it will be like incorrect address. So we cannot come to the right home with incorrect address. And also it must be practice. If you have only theory, if this is not enough, <laughs> you must have practice. You must come to the Holy Church, not only for pray, because the pray was in the Old Testament. Fastings was in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament we have, have Holy Sacraments. So it must be Holy Sacraments in our life and preparation, because our all our uh, life, like uh, now we celebrate meeting of the Lord, it's like personal meeting also, personal meeting with our Lord in all our life. We just uh, won't have this meeting over and over because we have uh, uh, a long preparation because before the main meeting after death with our Lord. So, mm -hmm. so we must find God or the more complicated, but I think accurate English word, encounter God everywhere and everything we do. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. We have uh, this question. There is the saints talk about no salvation outside the church. Um, and so does this mean in order to be saved, regularly speaking, we have to be Orthodox Christians? Mm -hmm. Because uh, if we are inside uh, Holy Church, uh, this is... Uh, how to say it, easy to understand for us uh, how God save us inside the Holy Church. But it's a question is how he can save us outside of the church. If he come, he uh, live here, he became, became a man, live here and die and resurrected and uh, made uh, his Holy Church. So our God did all for us, all. And then somebody said, oh, it can be outside of the church, salvation outside of the church. How? Because he give us all here. It's like an uh, uh, insult for, for our God. If we said uh, all what he did, not need for us, we can have salvation outside of the church. It's crazy. It's crazy. And uh, 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 yes, because, uh, for when we're outside of the church, we also have sin. Everybody has sin. But outside of the church, how, he, uh, how we, uh, what we can do, and okay, how our God can save us. By what? Because in the Holy Church, he saved uh, us by his holy blood. But outside, no. So it's like, uh, yeah, I think it's easy to understand, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Sometimes somebody asks me about this. And uh, for, for me, it's all have logic, all have clear uh, picture for understanding. So is it sort of like, Hospital versus outside the hospital. In the hospital, there's doctors. Mm -hmm. In the hospital, there's medicine. In the hospital, there's computerized equipment to diagnose you. Mm -hmm. In the hospital, there's beds where you can rest. In the hospital, there's life support. In the hospital, there's everything to save your life so you can live. Mm -hmm. Outside the hospital, maybe you'll pull through, but if you got a terminal illness, we presume you're going to die. Would that be a good analogy? Mm -hmm. And uh only maybe only one what i want to add uh because somebody you know somebody said it's okay god can do all what he want yes that's mean he can save us outside of the church this is not true <laughs> because yes he really uh, do all what he want what he want he want create the holy church that's mean 
he won't give us salvation inside. So this is the yes. answer. Answer because yes, yeah, somebody oh he do all what he want. Yes, he created holy church already. What this is what he want. This is what he want. He can save us outside, but uh, for for what he create his holy church if he can do it uh, as some by some anyway. So in another way, sorry. So mm -hmm. the church, Christ is the head, and we are the body. Mm -hmm. He is the vine. We are the branches. Mm -hmm. How are so. so? Would it be fair to say rhetorically? How could we be saved without being part of the body, without being a branch off the vine? Yes, a it's lot. the same logic, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of symbols, a lot of symbols, and uh, well, even after this, somebody said it because maybe he don't have this uh, experience also. For, as for me, I come to the church not in my childhood. I come in the church only uh, to the church only at seventeen years old, seventeen and a half years old so it was another experience before and after the different worlds different worlds because uh, uh, all my life i believe to god but uh, i don't know it's, you know before i uh, first time come to the holy sacraments uh, I, I i feel that some hole in inside me and i don't know what i must do with this big hole it's it's my experience and this is uh, how i usually explain it in, in another world when after Holy Sacraments, I feel that now all enough for me. Now I feel me uh, that um, I don't have uh, um, some empty, empty inside me. So yeah, uh, maybe somebody don't have this experience. But if we, if he will have, he will see by his uh, own eyes. And this is why it's important to preach Christianity and bring the Orthodox Church everywhere to save souls. That we have to go to every nation with Orthodox Christianity. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, because uh, uh, if somebody ready, like, uh, you know, uh, a lot of uh, Chinese people, for example, it's a, a lot of, but how many, how many of them are Orthodox Christians? <laughs> not a lot, of, <laughs> but uh, God not um, uh, take care about a lot of, how to say it, not take care about uh, somebody, um, okay, he mo um, mostly take care about somebody who won't have salvation. That's why some of Chinese people now in Moscow and uh, with our friends uh, in Moscow, they have uh, their experience uh, about uh, Orthodox uh, culture, firstly about Orthodox culture. And then somebody said, oh, I, I want to, uh, to see deeper, deeper. So it's only one, two, three, 10, 20 people uh, and on another side, uh, billion, billions of people. So this is the, uh, not about, because everybody have freedom. That's mean you, you can do all what you want. But if you want salvation, God help you from any country, from any culture, from any like island. Yeah. If you live in some island without communication, God help you, <laughs> don't worry. Let me ask a very American question. How is it fair that the Greeks, the Russians, the Bulgarians, the Georgians, they have orthodoxy for millennia now, right? For more than a thousand years. But we in the West don't. How is it fair that God um, had the church for centuries only in countries where we would not have the church? Can you can you repeat again the, uh, the, the last part? Yeah. How's it fair that God has church in there by salvation in Russia, in Bulgaria, in Georgia, but for so many years, not in Spain, not in America, not in the Philippines? Mm -hmm. uh, so maybe don't have somebody who was ready, who was ready uh, there. Uh, so this is his plan. We don't know his plan uh, in all in all details. Yes. So uh, we only must go and see somebody want or nobody. Uh, we, we I think everybody remember this uh, situation from the Acts of Holy Apostles when uh, apostles want go to Vifania and Holy Spirit have uh, said no. Yes, <laughs> because yes. how uh, maybe maybe we have somebody there uh, who who need uh, who like prepare who who ready to salvation and Holy Spirit said no in this city no I know you don't know but but as for me I know 
uh, maybe the same situation for for uh, a lot of countries uh, uh, we must go and we don't know uh, uh, and if the holy situation. yeah mm -hmm. the holy spirit mm -hmm. closes the door because god knows best he foreknows how people will respond to the message of mm -hmm. christ mm -hmm. how how a one priest said uh, if you uh, so two, he said two questions for us uh, does god want our salvation yes does he can save us yes so <laughs> so if you said yes and yes so uh what else what else how you can say after this that oh maybe somebody forget like he forget about spain he forget about me no he not forget he can he have his plan about uh our salvation my opinion father is we lack the asceticism in the west our food tastes too good Russian food, Greek food, not so good. So the people are able. I'm, I'm joking. It's okay. <laughs> very dry. <laughs> mm, I see. <laughs> the, um, so we got an audience question. Um, what do you What do you think about Father Seraphim Rose, uh, an ascetic in California, who died uh, a few decades ago? By Father Seraphim Rose. Yes, he was a, a great uh, uh, priest mon. I mean, uh, why I said priest mon because he was uh mon and he was a uh, priest together that's mm -hmm. why uh he uh, have a monastic life and he was a good priest who preach preach so two in one two in one in, in father seraphim rose and uh, it's very also it can be sign for us that in russia we have his books which uh, translated from english to uh, russian so it's ironic he was always translating from Ru russian to english so yes, it's gone the other way. <laughs> mm -hmm. So yes, yes, uh, he is popular. Uh, and uh, is he a saint? Uh, uh, Holy Church uh, can uh, can any uh, like say that this is a fact, yeah, about canonization of somebody. But uh, all what what we know, on my opinion, also he is uh, he have a, a very high spiritual life. So um, that's mean. So yes. I hope to see his icon someday. Mm -hmm. Of course, because uh, like uh, another, another uh, somebody, mm, uh, some, uh, yeah, some another people who not uh, canonized now, but we all know about their spiritual life, uh, about high level of their spiritual. How life. about the Father Daniel Sizoyev? Uh, sure. Uh, we, uh, uh, in the case of Father Daniel, not only his life and his words and um, a lot of uh, like um, miracles in his life, for a lot of people near uh, him have salvation, uh, come to the Holy Church from different uh, religions, different uh, yeah, uh, yeah, but also his holy death. Yes. This is the like you know the the best part of uh, our life, our death. Yes, and his death was like holy death. I I, I think uh, we can. Somebody said about something about his words. Maybe maybe something because we are all, we all people. But nobody can say uh, something uh, bad about his holy life when in the. A uh, priest, uh, Westman, in this holy church from holy altar, he go without uh, scaring because we have witness of this. Yes, and he was uh, killed in the church. What can be better? <laughs> I mean, what can be better? How many degrees of separation between you and Father Daniel? Meaning, how close did you get to know him? Do you know someone who knew Father Daniel? Um, did I you see. ever meet Father Daniel? Because uh, I think you're too young. Mm -hmm. unfortunately no but uh, i i remember it you know you ask you just ask me this and i uh, want to tell you some little story yeah i was in my uh, 11th grade the last grade of, of school in russia yes okay and i was near a tv yes i in that time i was on my way to the church but not so close it was like only see that uh where <laughs> what is this yeah so and i on tv in in a uh, uh, news at news or i i uh, saw that some priest was killed in in moscow and uh, i in that uh, time i think oh why who want 
who won't kill the priest. Yeah, I don't understand it clear. Only I not go to the church that I'm. Yeah, I not understand it clear. But in my head, only one question: Who won't do it? Who won't do it? And after two years, I think around, maybe yeah, around uh, after two years, I uh, read or read a first uh, book of Father Daniel. Uh, it was. Uh, Прогулка протестанта по православному храму. Walking uh, for Walk Protestant. in the Protestant Church. Yeah. Yes. Yes. It was my first book, and I only uh, also want to share with you my experience when I opened this book and I ju just start to read. Just start to read. It was like wow. Uh, some you feel not only um, you feel spirit. You feel spirit. It, wow. it was converting you. Mm -mm. It was the uh, last uh, drop, maybe, <laughs> where I want to be like uh, somebody who also preach, not like who only learn on our faith. I want to share with somebody else. So, and Father Daniel and his words, how he said, and I see, yes, it can be like this. We can and we must uh, preach about our Lord. So, little book but uh with the great uh, uh spirit inside i don't know how to say it in english but yes. i feel it i feel it in it was uh, only the saints words are great like experience that. Mm -hmm. yes great experience for me so i unfortunately don't know him personally but from his books uh you can uh, like <laughs> you you um have meeting with uh, when you read his books it's a, like meeting with uh, him meeting with him. Now, we have this question, and uh, it is, does Father have thoughts about baptismal form and reception of converts? So, Father, um, let me first ask you this. Is there baptism outside the church? Baptism outside the church? Uh, so, maybe this is the question for uh, somebody who know canons uh, and I don't, not only know canons but understand canons better than me but uh, we can mm, uh, how to say think about it can can uh, think about it because uh, sometimes in the holy church from uh, this schismatic starabriatsi with uh, all the um, uh, all believers all like all be yeah like all believers sometimes we uh, not have a, a holy baptism again not do it again but uh, chrismation of course uh, so but they are outside of the church but uh, the form of baptism if it was correct form of baptism and so, correct form is pouring of water or full immersion three times uh no no i mean i mean uh, like uh, um three times three times sometimes it can be like so it could be pouring it could be yeah but of course, it's better because it's a baptism. It's a Latin word that means that we must, um, um, uh, you said it, this word. Immersion. So, full yes, yes. dunk under water. Under water, okay. yeah. So, of course, we, um, if you have a possibility, do it. Under water, you must do it. You must do it. But, yeah, maybe. Um, now, yeah. Outside the church where they're pouring water, or even if they're doing it correctly, is the Holy Spirit in the baptism outside the church? Uh, yes, this this can be um, some example for us that Holy Spirit can really can do all what he wants because uh, uh, he is a person. But uh, anyway, even if we have Holy Baptism uh, outside of the church, what uh, must be our next step? Go to the church, of course. So uh, that's mean uh, we must be uh, carefully in uh, uh, each situations if we have some some case like this we must uh, uh, have uh, like uh, personal thinking about it and the bishops must think about it in any in any uh, situation must ask our bishop and he must think uh oh, in this uh, in, uh, in 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 this situation it was or it was not like maybe you remember this uh, this um, situation when it was like a baptism in the desert without water yes yes in the, yeah, uh, yeah. In the lives uh, of saints uh-huh and and uh, but after this uh these fathers in that monastery think oh we don't have no one no one um 
um, situation like this in all church history, and they baptize this man by water. So, um, so you're saying it's it's is it be accurate to say it is possible that the Holy Spirit is in baptisms outside the church, but it's best when someone enters the church to baptize them and make sure everything's done right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, That's so right. you'd agree with that, mm -hmm. and um, and so do you think then whether they are units? like in Western Ukraine, mm -hmm. whether they're all believers, it is best, not necessary, but best to baptize them all if they become Orthodox. Ah, I see. So. Um, or not for them. Uh, yeah, for for them, for them. Maybe not, maybe priest only, uh, how to say it, must uh, read all in other prayers and have a holy sacrament of chrismation uh, but if we're not sure about form if we're not sure like if or or another situation if we really know that their face like um, really incorrect like they not uh, believe correct believe in dogmatics i mean like, dogmatics no level. holy trinity or something yeah something like this it's better uh, have Holy baptism again, the, uh, have this holy sacrament again. So, because if we're not sure, it's better baptize somebody than uh, that not baptize. How somebody. about Lutherans or Roman Catholics, like the ones in Italy and Germany, uh -huh. where they're just they're baptizing in the name of the Holy Trinity, but they're just pouring, they just pour water. Mm. And if you don't have opinion, that's okay. Say I don't have an opinion. I'm, I think that's a remember we're a lot of Lutherans and Roman Catholics yes, in the West, so yes. that's why we care. You know, uh, I think the same opinion, like I just said, that uh, if uh, we see, like now, uh, just now, uh, or, or right now, uh, they not believe in Holy Trinity, correct? We must baptize them. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's better, of course, uh, uh, because yeah, sometimes somebody like believe correct, but uh, maybe every next uh, century, uh, Roman Catholic Church and Lutheran. Uh, they are far away and far away and far away. That's why. Uh, so you think maybe they're too far away now? It'd be better to rebaptize them, for, or for them, I think yes, because if, for example, if in Roman Catholic Church we have this uh, teaching about Holy Spirit who proceeds yeah, the filioque. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's already, you know, it's already, it's already uh, incorrect teaching about not about some traditions, but about dogmatics. That's mean that uh, maybe. If, uh, last uh, 1,000 years is better <laughs> baptize them. So, uh, but about somebody else, may, maybe need yeah, to so be all personal. Mm -hmm. So all believers don't have that problem, uh, right? Because uh, all believers uh, need check again. Because you know that in uh, outside of the church, we can see every uh, 10 years, especially every 100 years, teaching can be changed. Mm -hmm. It's my, we, my when somebody come to us, maybe need to check everybody uh, again how do you believe <laughs> so because there's some are. crazy old believers out there okay how, how about this um for those of us who are raised protestant it is very difficult for our families to understand our conversion my grandfather is 95 how can i share orthodoxy with him mm -hmm. it's a difficult question why difficult because in theory not difficult but in our uh, daily life we we want for all our how we said it in english homies or i mean uh, parents and uh, aunts and uncles and uh, grandparents here yeah, all our i don't know this word in, in russian we said it rodstvenniki rodstvenniki all all of them want uh oh i mean sorry come come to orthodox church and have salvation but uh, as for because it's a anytime it's free choice Free choice, uh, like uh, in Saint Louis. Can I can I share some one more story from Saint Louis? Because one man he have Saint Louis in Cambodia. By the way, it's on the coast. Mm -hmm. Father was priest there for years. Continue. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, one man have a cancer there, and we have friendship with him, uh, and he uh, help us in the church, but. He know about cancer. He know that he will live maybe one more month, two more months. That's all maximum. But he live 
like half of year more and every like in every uh, situation when i meet him i again and again uh, just to uh, uh offer offer him if you want to be baptized because he not baptized uh, i am here you know i'm here i can share with you your our path i go to to you to your home and baptize you there in your home everything everything what you want but uh, unfortunately uh, he died without uh, holy baptism and three days before before his death he said me just like last time like last time that i'm sorry i think about your offering uh, but it is not, and and again it was like not is this not for me you know i'm too old i'm da, 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 blah 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 so no don't think about it only just said me if you want i come said no i don't want sorry and three days after this he he died so uh, we must share and if the question was how we can share different method methods yeah different different we can pray we can uh, use all if we if we see that somebody wanted we we must uh, use this uh, moment take take this catch this moment and share again and maybe invite somebody else or send some videos or anything anything so anything if but if somebody too old maybe maybe uh, need to concentrate on prayers because if somebody too old maybe he cannot understand understand uh, it's clear but if we pray about it we can have some miracles which i know from south south africa it mm. was some miracle there uh, by the way grand grandma grandma of some person there was a uh, protestant and they really like i can use this word hate hate of orthodox church but uh, some days before his death when she I maybe I not remember all details, but how I remember, she already cannot speak or speak it a little. And he said about I was be baptized in Orthodox Church. Mm. Everybody was amazed how it can be <laughs> so because he hate Orthodox Church. It was some preparation from God with pastors with some situations. We know it. <laughs> and after this uh, decision in her heart, ready, and he said I will be baptized in Orthodox Church. And uh, by the way, in that day. Uh, some priests were there, but he said, "I don't, I don't have cross. I don't have uh, uh, holy mm, mirror, mirror for holy chrismation. I, I have any, uh, I have nothing for baptize her. But her <coughs> and, uh, granddaughters and uh, anybody, they find some cross, find candles, find anything at home, and take it, take it all this year for your holy baptism. What do we also have?" Oh, okay. <laughs> so it was immediately uh, holy baptism for her, and uh, after some days he come again for holy chrismation, and he died like an Orthodox uh, Christian. It's a miracle because nobody, nobody was ready for this. I so that's excellent. Mm -hmm. The uh, a miracle. <laughs> well, we're talking about baptism. Um, what is the fate of the fate of unbaptized children? Um, there's countless children that whether protestant whether pagan um that die without baptism um they don't sin willfully they're too unintelligent to mm -hmm. sin willfully um do they go to heaven or do they go to hell uh how we know how we believe in orthodox church uh because they don't have personal sin personal they don't have punishment but also they don't have good deeds, something like uh, they can show in their life that he want to be with God. So also they don't have, how to say it, um, some, okay, punishment, some something from God, like uh, if you, okay, if you do, do something good, you have what? Reward. Yeah. Reward. Reward, some, some reward. But this is also mercy mercy of god to them why they cannot uh we know that they cannot come to heaven because they are not baptized yet but also they not go to hell like uh, in some also some like we can maybe we can 
uh, let's call it tell, uh, you call hell. it hell, but it, it doesn't feel bad. Yes, because this is without punishment, without yes. torments. Yes, this is only like place without uh, like uh, with, with, uh, like uh, some blind, somebody blind, so uh, cannot see, cannot come to the uh, heaven uh, of our Lord, uh, but they can they have mercy uh, from uh, uh, him because he created uh, our lord created them and our lord take them from this earth life maybe before they have personal personal sin because it's better to have existing or uh, 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 again we don't have existing uh, whole, i think saint gregory palama said that and anyway if you exist it's already mercy to you Yes, because somebody, oh, I am sick, I am poor, I'm. But Saint Gregory, I think Saint Gregory Palama said that if you have existing, it's already mercy to you. So it's also mercy from God to somebody who, somebody infant, somebody children who no, not was uh, die without holy baptism outside of the church. So they have a sort of mercy. They have eternal existence. It's not painful. Yes, they yes. just don't have theosis. They're just not in heaven. They're blind, yes, yes. spiritually blind. That is. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. and. Um, Okay, and so let me ask you this, which is birth control, contraception. Uh, Could Orthodox Christians purposely avoid having children, or is it teaching the church that um, sexual relations in marriage um, are for procreation? This is a big debate in the West. We're interested what your advice would be for a young couple asking you this. They want to be uh -huh. married. So... <coughs> maybe the different details so first moment um this is about official document of russian orthodox church this document was in uh, how to say 2000 <laughs> 2000 uh, two, yeah 2000 year it was mm -hmm. official document uh, on uh, council uh, uh, of russian orthodox church and there we can read that uh, if this is like uh, some something after uh to to uh how when when uh, child uh, uh became, is conceived after conception after conception this will be uh murder yeah so no abortion after murder yeah no abortion no birth control pill yes yes because if after it's already a human yes with with, with body little body and with soul real soul that's why after any way we can can do it all, all, uh, all, um, even in situation, I'm sorry if somebody was raped. Yes. Also, not need to kill. Don't. Kill. Not the kids' fault. Yeah. Not. Not. Uh huh. So, but this is terrible situation. But it, sometimes it happens. And uh, but before, if we don't have a new human, not yet. Uh, it can be, if you if you not believe to God, this can be our sin if we. We think, oh, we afraid, we're scary to have children now. But what are you scary? If God give you children, I'm sorry, if God give you children, so uh, do you think so the, that he I'm scared you? I can't pay for the kids. Yes. So I want to have sex without, uh, without trying to have children. Yes. And your response to that would be? Mm -hmm. So, uh, no, no, no. If you are husband and wife, yeah. it's an official marriage. What, what? What are you scared for? What are you afraid for? Because if God give you children, uh, He will help you also. So, but uh, I recommend if a lot of children already, like five, six, seven children already, and some a mother, some wife can really tire it because of uh, um, uh, her her body already. <laughs> So physically, uh, it's, physically, it's medically difficult to have more children. Yes. Yeah, so okay. uh, so anyway. Uh, is, is, is the best way, the best way, the personal con conversation with our God and this mother, or maybe with father or without, can pray to God. I'm sorry, I'm le really tired. Can you, can you maybe stop it now? Maybe one year, two years more without children, for I have some uh, rest. <laughs> so, but it's it's this is not it's, this is like, and I know the situation when somebody pray like this, and okay, and God stop it. If you're not 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 ready to this, that's got not give your children more. So and so it sounds like you're saying the ideal is for a husband and wife <laughs> to agree together 
now's not a good time. So we'll, we're going to fast from sexual relations until it's a good time. But if what if the husband or the wife doesn't want to fast, but the other spouse does from sex? Ah, no, this is another situation. Okay. This is not about children, not about b- believing to God. This is only about our uh, weakness. Yeah, <laughs> like we're, when we are not so stronger. Uh, glory to God. Holy Church, really understand it, how it can be uh, difficult for somebody. And during two years, uh, 2000, sorry, 2000 years of uh, church history, no one canon said about uh, holy fasting. And uh, I mean, holy fast about... Uh, sexual oh, fasting. Yeah, yeah, sexual fasting. No canon no on canon. fasting. No one sex. canon. Yes. Uh, but in a logic, we can understand. If you can, of course, you must do it because this is holy fasting. But if you cannot, uh, in the case of meat, no meat. Yes, but in a case of uh, sexual uh, relationship, I don't know with your wife. If uh, your wife uh, weak and husband more strong, help your wife. Yes, in the, in other situation, if you are so weak and your wife strong, your wife can help you. So because if in this situation, because this because this is very strong uh, passion. Yes, passion. If you uh, if ha- husband or wife not permit, like. Not agree have this uh yeah situation during holy fasting it can be big and big problems in your in your family because husband and wife can go and cheating so yes. uh, that's why we have no one canon and so the personal opinion for husband and wife and so it's best to fast but the commandment from god through saint paul is that the husband or wife has to we say condescend but has to help the weaker spouse if sex is where the weakness is. Mm-hmm. Because we not must support our uh, this passion. Yeah, uh, I don't know how to say it. This passion, uh, not 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 must support support it like more and more. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, if you uh, cannot pray, you cannot think uh, about somebody else. So you have a wife or you have husband. What's wrong? Nothing wrong. Now, Mm -hmm. let me, this is going to sound inappropriate, but it's a real situation a lot of people deal with. So I'm going to ask the question. So forgive me just for putting it very straight for, Uh we. this is, you know, English second language, right? So Mm -hmm. what if the (laughs) wife wants to fast? She's had seven children. She, She could die. She has another, the doctor says, right? But the husband can't stop thinking about sex and he wants sex would that be a situation where contraception to, to birth control methods that aren't abortion related would be acceptable or do you think that would be too far mm, i think yeah i think i understand this question uh so i i forget but i i think also in this document official document Say, uh, uh, our bishops said that uh, contraception before before it became a human can be in some really uh, d- difficult situations. Mm-hmm. So, but uh, yeah, the best way we know what the best way. But sometimes is this is not the best way. Sometimes it's some um, yeah uh, some difficult situations. Mm-hmm. So the best way is chastity or abstinence, no sex. But certain permissible methods of birth control before conception may be allowed by a spiritual father. Would that be accurate? Mm, I think I'm not sure, you know. I'm not sure. Do we need opinion of spiritual father here? No. Okay, so you don't even need a spiritual father we, in this we, situation. Maybe we can we can tell. Because we, 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 we tell anything to our spiritual father, but not like give us blessing. No, no, I think this is not his responsibility, but he can pray. He can pray it with you. And if you have this terrible situation which you when you cannot think about anything else, uh, yes, we must pray together. But 
maybe responsibility responsibility must be uh, for husband and wife not for spiritual father because uh, this is their personal life so would it be I accurate think. to say in russia the bishops have spoken they they have said what is permissible what's not permissible yes. and the application of whether or not you use a permissible form of contraception mm -hmm. is something that depends on the married couple according to their spirituality in this department whether or not they're able to fast or not. Mm -hmm. Would that be accurate? I think yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this is something to be further clarified if there's something linguistic here, but I know people obsess over this question. And so- a um, popular question, popular question, question in Russia also, <laughs> because somebody come and don't know about this. And I sometimes I said about this, do you know this, uh, this situation, no, this rule? No. So, uh, because yes, yeah, sometimes uh, they have a lot of problems uh, according to uh, fast uh, fasting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we must explain that uh, this is some another situation. For example, if, uh, if, if uh, I'm, I'm sorry, in, in pregnancy or in um, especially when women have blood, blood yes. is uh, impossible. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah. So in in the case of have have blood, impossible. In pregnancy also, it must be think about it. But the best way we know the best way. But sometimes this is not the best way. Mm -hmm. that's, that's all maybe. Mm -hmm. And so we apply the teaching according to um, our ability to practice the teaching. Sorry, can I? And so it depends whether or not the couple are strong when it comes to fasting mm -hmm. from sex or not. Yes. Yes. And so you would you would encourage someone to fast, but you can't give a married couple an obedience to fast from sex. Would that be accurate? Yes, yes. Okay. This is their responsibility, not mine. <laughs> now, here's a question which is going to sound crazy to you. Are you ready? Okay. What are the spiritual implications of a child conceived out of wedlock? Um, and so what he's saying is a child is born uh, is born from a mother that's not married um how does that affect the child if at all mm -hmm. so uh, like uh, right so the, how, and so let me ask the question maybe a little more broadly to make it easier mm -hmm. thank you are children um if the parents are sinful sexually they're doing sinful sexual things okay and the baby's in the belly. I see. All right. Does that affect the baby in the belly when the baby's born? Does that child have passions from the parents? Ah, I see. So if God give life to somebody, we cannot, we cannot um, stop this life. I mm -hmm. mean, yeah, we, we can stop life of animals sometimes. If uh, they are very old and sick, yeah, but not in the case of human, we cannot stop the life of human like euthanasia or something else. No way. Uh, so if uh, uh, okay. somebody pregnant and uh, she must, she must. Yeah. So no abortion, but let's say she's not married, and let's say um, she. Again, I'm going to be very plainly spoken because of language issues. <coughs> she commits acts of fornication. You know what fornication is in English or no? Uh, uh, sexual acts not for having children. She's pregnant. Uh huh. And she continues having sex and doing different sexual things um, without being married, though uh -huh. she's pregnant. How does that, does that the question is, yes. affect the child? Does the child, when the child is born, have any spiritual um, changes due to what his or her mother was doing? Yeah, maybe I understand it. So we are genetically, we have, we have uh, something from our parents. So it, it also passions from our parents, of course, of course, yeah. But this is not, this is matter. But uh, not so matter if somebody born and have passion from their parents. Their parents were like uh, 
uh, alcoholic or something like this and you have the same problem but you can stop it yes you can stop it it's your it will be your personal choice so, anyway mm -hmm, so right. it affects the child a little bit but that child like any other passion god gives the grace to overcome mm -hmm. anything the parents pass on to them mm -hmm. because god give uh, life to this uh, child that's why we cannot stop it and uh, anyway child must born and uh, yeah but after this it can be we, we all understand it can be a lot of different oh sorry uh, uh, terrible situations when the mother don't want they uh, they put the child to another special place yeah orphanage oh yeah orphanage or some somebody try to yeah a lot of uh, terrible situations but anyway if somebody asked me do we can we have can we have uh, abortion in this situation no of course because we cannot stop human life but what if they're not asking yeah. about abortion will will the child born let's say the parents struggle with the passions yes yes all right mm -hmm. especially sexual passions they're not married and they, uh... will the child that's born from the result of those parents mm -hmm. have those passions anyway uh, uh our children have uh, uh, our passions in in uh, official marriage without official marriage mm -hmm. so uh, we know that from saint uh, parents mm -hmm. uh, uh, usually born <laughs> saint uh, children yes. like uh, parents of saint uh, sergius of radonish yes and parents of um uh, Saint Basil the Great. I mean, not only but Basil the Great, Basil the Great, Saint Gregory Nisky. Yes, the whole family, oh, yeah. the whole yeah. family. So, yeah. and uh, yeah. So anyway, so uh, the parents children have something from us, of yeah. course. So, being devout is good for the kids. Being not is bad for the kids. But God gives the grace to all to mm -hmm. be saved. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. and you can be first in your uh, generation. Who can stop it if your mother and uh, another your uh grandmother some grandfather somebody else uh yeah have a lot of passions and not uh, in the church now but you can you yeah. can be the your, first your your great grandfather could be an alcoholic yes your grandfather yes. could be an alcoholic your father could be an alcoholic but yes. you don't have to be an alcoholic all family <laughs> all of them are alcoholics so but you can be the first who who stop it and maybe from you it will be new generation like same generation maybe why not because we we, we know a lot of uh, murders or some some terrible uh, people uh, became a saint so now are you aware there's in the west a category of thought we call it mortal sin and venial sin have you ever uh, heard of that before uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all yes, right so mm -hmm. so mortal sins as a review for the audience are sins i'm just going to adjust the camera a little bit mortal sins are sins that if you don't repent you go to hell yes venial sins are sinful um but you don't automatically go to hell if you don't repent they're a little less serious mm -hmm. right so um for the audience then because they're obsessed over the birth control <coughs> issue roman catholics believe um not having children is mortal sin ah. if you have sex. If you do that, you go to hell. And oh, so wow. the question is, what do you say from your understanding, is it mortal sin, uh, sexual relations, not for having children? Is it mortal sin? Is it venial sin? Or does it depend on the circumstances? No, so <laughs> not uh, uh, as for me, but uh, our uh, church, no no one time no one time said that if somebody don't want to have a children it is a mortal sin no yes no 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 uh, uh but uh, if you don't want to have a children this is the sin because maybe you are like uh, how to say the egoist when you think about yourself on only and don't want to take care about somebody else maybe you are want to live for yourself only for yourself uh, egotistical Ego yes egotistical this yeah this is the sin this is the sin and uh, so maybe uh, you could go to hell for being egotistical yes but, but not particularly for any yeah. one egotistical because, act yes because the reason is and uh, i think the 
that somebody if somebody don't want to have a children this is not a reason this is like result yes the reason another reason so uh we must uh dig a little deeper for see uh the the, the main reason the the true reason so the true reason can be that you love but only yourself and this is the great sin if you love only yourself and the result can be you don't have a children you a lot of results yeah mm -hmm. it's or in america you become a dog and cat parent and have no kids ah uh, the um oh. it's this might not translate well so i'll just say it um in the west there's this a uh, this pharisaical obsession with just tell me what i could do and what can i do so that way i could do whatever i want within the rules uh right so people want <clears throat> like these signs i could do this i can't do that uh and so they're not looking at whether i'm being egotistical they're looking at i could be egotistical mm -hmm. as long as i don't go past this line uh right <laughs> and so that's that might seem strange to you but that's why my audience who speaks mostly english obsesses over the question they want to be told what's the line so i could get as close to the line as possible <laughs> right. I know that's spiritually strange, but that is the thought process. And um, my opinion is simply that is not the right way to think about it. We, mm -hmm. we don't we don't think of our spiritual lives as in let me go to heaven to quote the Bible by the skin of my teeth, like Job says. Right. Um, we don't want to go to heaven sinning as much as possible. It's the opposite. We want to go to heaven sinning as little as possible. Mm -hmm. So it's usually the person asking that sort of question wants to know how much could I sin and go to heaven? And that's the wrong question. All right. <laughs> now, so let me give you an opportunity to respond um, as much as you understood what I just said. Yeah, I think I understood. I just remember uh, the movie uh, Rocky. Yes. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> it was some question from Sylvester Stallone. Uh, uh, I felt, so. Uh, how, how how he said in English, mm, uh, you show oh, yeah like you show me your best mm -hmm. with scent. You show me your best, and uh, um, uh, yes, this is the maybe uh, uh, the answer. <laughs> if you if we want show to God our best, we are on the right way. Yes. If we are like oh, <laughs> I don't want do something on the best way i only want to do it by some rules no 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 this is some official uh like uh, some not like in a, in a, another um, in, a, in another uh okay some organization mm -hmm. you come to the work you do your work and nothing more if five o'clock i go to home but not in, like in a spiritual life it's, it's in spiritual life it's like in five o'clock uh, or uh, when I go outside from the church, I stop it. I stop, yeah. stop my spiritual life, and I continue it next next week, ne next Sunday. Yeah, no, no, of course not. Uh, but mu must be the uh, every moment of your life, every moment of your life, you try to show your best, and you try to think about God uh, in all your life. Like uh, where the best way maybe live like you see icon of Christ before your eyes anytime because when you forget about it some uh, sin start uh if you yeah like the i father. know it <laughs> in my experience also anyway forget if i have some uh, re relax a little and forget about that uh, it starts the father say uh, we must always be living like we're gonna die yes tomorrow yes, right yes. so it's hard but right we always want to do our best because we don't know when our last day is going to be mm -hmm, mm -hmm. of course because um, yeah it's uh, like Wait, uh, okay sorry yes Father. yeah yeah i want maybe one want to add a little more it's like uh maybe we can have example in a husband and wife life if you uh, uh like your wife your, your wife cry and said you not love me he said no 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 i officially do all of you officially <laughs> this one that one why I, you said i, I not love you <laughs> i tell my wife that all the time yeah 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 uh so i i know that it must be one hour a day one hour a day i speak with you but more so it's yeah it's crazy no no one do it like this it's like uh, so why would we do that with god mm -hmm. yes so because he's the person and this is must be personal uh relationship yeah but personal relationship personal relationship is not a official relationship it's like uh 
uh, very close relationship, very warm yeah. relationship. Organic, close um, relationship with God. Mm -hmm. the, the, if we understand it, <laughs> we don't think anymore about like official way to heaven. No, it's uh, must be it's a relationship all our life way to heaven. Yeah, it's all of our life worked out with God, close mm -hmm. with God. Mm -hmm. um, very important question. You said you quoted the movie Rocky. Yes. <laughs> Do you remember Rocky IV when he's in Russia? Ah, <laughs> yes. Now, as a Russian, when Rocky fights Ivan Drago mm -hmm. in Russia, who did he want to win, Rocky or Drago? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> this is important, Father. Mm, important question. <laughs> oh, uh, as, as for me, it's for me if we uh, not going to be offended. Who did he want to win? Um, I think who have like in spiritual life have have the best preparation, he will win. If you think, oh, I am stronger that because I am Russian or I am American or I am like taller, tall, uh, even Drago, you, very big, yeah, 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 or I am like have massive than you, no. Is the uh, the best way to have like in spiritual life the best preparation. You so, wanted Rocky to win. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But uh, uh, everybody uh, can win, and uh, Rocky have. Uh, I saw. I remember that he have uh, uh, strict preparation. That's mean, mm -hmm. and he, he want to win. Yeah. And so Rocky uh, won the fight. Uh -huh. Were you happy he won, or you wanted Drago to win? Uh, it's for me. I'm uh, uh, not thinking about it. <laughs> also, because uh, Dolph Lundgren, not Russian. He's a queen. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Yeah. It's for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, it, I'm i sorry about uh, box. Yeah? Yes. yes. Boxing. Yes. Boxing. I, I, don't, I don't love boxing. Uh, I, I love some uh, motivation of these films, mm -hmm. of all these films. But as for boxing, I don't love it because it must hit somebody. Very violent. Mm, yes, violent. Mm. Uh, like wrestling can be sometimes more uh, gentle, if we can say, say well, gentle. It's about holding someone down, not knocking them out. Mm -hmm. Yes. Be because, yeah, if you want to have a, a competition with somebody, be careful. Because in a boxing, you can, you can kill somebody. So, uh, I'm yeah. We now, mm -hmm, I'm going to ask an audience question, um, and then I'm going to reframe it so you don't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. So someone says, what does Father think about Petra Kirill stance on Islam and traditional religions in Russia? And what does he perceive as the broader attitude towards your patriarch's views in the Russian Orthodox Church? So because um, it's inappropriate for a Russian priest to criticize their bishops, mm -hmm. I'm going to ask a different question. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ecumenism more broadly. All right, so is there permissible ecumenism? Is ecumenism a heresy? Um, how do you understand ecumenism? Ah, uh, Saint Eustin Justin Popovich from Serbia. Yes, he have a lot of conversations about ecumenism. Yes, but about this, how to say it? Form, mm -hmm. form of ecumenism. When somebody just said, "Oh, you don't have problems, and we also don't have problems, and nobody don't have problems, everybody will be saved." This is the great heresy. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, it must be the uh, real, uh, no, no, how to say the the right, yeah, the right form of ecumenism. When somebody want to join to Orthodox Church, if uh, if you want uh, to be uh, to to together we we okay we all want to be together it's true everybody want to be together but uh, the right form of communism join to the orthodox church like to the place uh, or to the ship of salvation yeah this is the true communism that's all because if uh, somebody said uh, we must uh, have a, uh, uh, like to, to must be together with muslims with buddhists with uh, everybody okay we can have conversation with everybody but if you want like pray together or said like you and me have the one god 
this is not true because uh, uh, of course God is only one, mm -hmm. but you not not believe to Him correct. That's why, like an example with a dress, you not come to Him. You come to another another home, and uh, you will be amazed. Where is the God? He is not here, so it will be big uh, trouble for you. So the right form of ecumenism, join to the Orthodox Church, like to the place of salvation, because uh, if somebody said that uh, yeah we we uh, must have a relationship with uh, muslims mm -hmm. of course with everybody but uh if uh, we have this relationship and somebody ask us somebody ask us what do you think about not about muslims but about islam like some religion what we must say according to holy fathers islam is a, a religion uh, which uh, uh, cannot save us. This is the right answer, of course. So, but we we love people and don't love lie. We don't love somebody. Oh, sorry, something, something which can uh, 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 kill us. So I, I don't know. I give yeah, you answer. It yeah. makes sense. So ecumenism. Uh, it's good to talk to people. Invite them into the house, the church. Um, it's bad to not invite them and act like they're already in the house. Of course, of course. So on that note, let's talk about evangelization. Father, this question's for you. What do you think the Orthodox Church could do to improve evangelism efforts? The Latin Church is the highest growing church of most of Africa and Asia. In America, it's evangelicals and Pentecostals. So Henry's asking, what could the Orthodox do better to compete with the other Christ with Christian sectarians? Mm, can you explain me a little uh, the, the, this part of this question? Uh, wh what we must do for have good given evangelization? How, how, yeah, how could the Orthodox be more successful with missions like Cambodia, ah. missions like Thailand? Ah. How, how could we make more converts to Orthodox Christianity? Oh, so this I think this is not a little question. Yes, like a like a question for long conversation. But if all right, shortly, Father, you got one minute. Okay, if shortly, uh, we must go. If we sit down, nothing happened. <laughs> Firstly, we must go. We must have correct face. We must have our personal labor. Uh, and we must uh, pray to God because only he can change hearts. And uh, we must, how uh, Saint, uh, uh, I think Saint Nicholas from Japan said it, we must firstly love people. Yes. And only after this, share with them uh, our faith that's all so we need orthodox christians to go to these mission fields these other countries live with the people get to know the people mm -hmm. and then speak with those people invite them into the church yes yes and share with them mm -hmm. and let me i'm going to be more forward father okay. okay so that means you viewers need to pray and consider becoming a missionary oh. going moving to a country learning the language evangelizing the people if you can't do that it means sending money you must support the mission with money um i think what um i think what people need to do is to actively work for the mission uh the, the what I want to add yes. also that uh, somebody think I cannot come to another country. Of course, but you can pray, you can support because, you, could, the, you know, I don't know why, but uh, somebody think that we must build the churches, that's right. We must uh, speak with Orthodox, who, who are Orthodox already. That's also right. But no, 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 we must first speak with our orthodox christians and only after this go to another nations this is the fatal fatal mistake <laughs> yeah meaning there's not enough orthodoxy in russia yes. there's not enough orthodoxy in america we gotta fix russia and america first before going to cambodia but russia and america are always going to be messed up so we have to go make disciples of all nations mm -hmm. like the lord said yes 
because the poor we always have with us are always going to have problems, right? Am I getting this right? Mm -hmm. I, I uh, remember Father George Maximov in one uh, his uh, video, he said mm -hmm. that this is like somebody greedy, you know, somebody greedy and said, it's not enough for me. <laughs> I not give you nothing. Yeah, <laughs> It's not enough for me. But how it cannot, if uh, we have a lot of priests, for in Russia, okay, yeah. in Russia, for example, and uh, not a lot of priests in Thailand, in Cambodia, in uh, uh, in other countries. So, so if somebody uh, cannot come, this is also I I not so understand it. But if it, more than that, if somebody said we we cannot send some priests for you, <laughs> we cannot do something for you because it's not enough for us. How it's not enough for us for you? Yeah, <laughs> how it because it. It's kind of like it's like a middle, crazy. <laughs> it's like a middle class family that says, you know, I have bills to pay. Mm -hmm. You know, we only own two cars. You know, um, so I, we have to fix them. We have a house. We don't have money to give to the poor people. And what the Lord tells us is, we're supposed to give to everybody. Mm -hmm. So maybe you won't be as middle class. Maybe you need one car instead of two. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, St. John, the forerunner says to those who have two coats, give to those who have no coats. Mm -hmm. So you only have one. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so in the same way, it's with the faith. May, in America, we don't have enough, but we have more than Cambodia. Mm -hmm. And and so we have to think of it that way, not be greedy, yes. like Father George said. Uh, maybe only one what I want to add. Yeah, it's like uh, we're not we're not said. We not said about some um, how to say it. We said not about high level. We said only about comfort level, not like uh, rich level. Yeah, rich level of the church. For we want here the the richest church in Cambodia with anything with a lot of like uh, gold uh, items inside the church. No, I want, it, but uh, I not. This cross looks like it's made of wood. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and and uh, we not said about uh, support us for we'll be rich. No, support us for we have uh, some comfort conditions for continue uh, pray, live, uh, preach here. So only comfort level. It's enough. Nobody want. Uh, nobody want so so rich. No, no, no. Comfort level because sometimes it's not enough. It's not enough Westmans, some uh, like Father Cornelian Philippines. Yeah, they have a lot of uh, uh, parishes, and uh, really not enough Westmans, not enough items, church items. Uh, in some parishes, they also don't have electricity. In Cambodia, we have electricity in most every of the time. Hour. Yes, most of the time. <laughs> there, they uh, don't have this uh, cable. Also, don't have cable. No, they don't have power lines. Yes, don't have power lines in some parishes. So, yeah, that's mean uh, this is not so comfort level. This is uncomfortable, uncomfortable level. I think. So okay. Think only about comfort level is enough. Now, this is a question for me, Father. Um, Liz says, "I love Russians, and my patron saint is Tsar Nicholas, Nicholas II. But why the backhand hand tone towards larpers? That again." This is towards me, not towards you. Um, the There are priests in our church, bro. Chill. Um, Liz, I agree with you 100%. Um, the title of this video is purposely clickbait because there's people arguing over questions in this video. Um, and they're saying, I never hear this or that answered this way in the real world. And so the idea is for people to see in the real world and here, like Russia, we have um, Father Roman here representing what you know a standard uh, Russian Orthodox priest. Um, what in the real world is taught by a, a Orthodox priest? I think Father Roman would agree with me a thousand percent that it doesn't matter if you're Russian, if you're Greek, if you are a Philippine convert. Mm -hmm. it does, it, they're all priests, and they're all laymen. We're all Orthodox if we're in the church. And so it doesn't matter what anyone is. Um, so um, I think if uh, you didn't understand, that's my tone and the tone of this actual video. I hope this makes it clearer. Um, but the idea is for people that are confused, what does orthodoxy really teach? 
The idea is to give people a window into here's what is normal whenever you speak to someone outside the United States. Mm -hmm. And um, and so this gives an opportunity to people listening in English. Um, thanks to Father Roman, um, you know, me be able to speak with you. And I've spoke with Father Pisces and uh, with other priests. This gives a window into what pretty plain answers to questions that are not controversial in Orthodox countries, but controversial in the West. And so the clickbait is a condescension for confused people. And I apologize for any offense it may cause. And I know that there's a potential of offense, but the intent and motivation is so people know that there are answers to these questions, which aren't controversial and are actually very calm. And that's why we're having a calm conversation about these things. So Liz, I, I hope this does help you. Um, all right, so that's that with Liz. And we'll go back to questions for Father. Um, Renee says, I am currently an inquirer into the Orthodox Church. He's not Orthodox. He's just learning about it. Okay. But I live in a mostly Catholic country. How may I further my Orthodox faith without being able to visit an Orthodox church? Mm -hmm. so. so someone's, uh, they want to be Orthodox, but yes. there's... Orthodox Church is very far away, and it's very close Roman Catholic churches. Mm -hmm, What's your advice for that person? I just remember <clears throat> uh, one Philippine man who come uh, every Sunday. It was three hours one way for come to divine service and three hours for come back to his home. So three hours every every week, every week. Is this, this is very uh, uh, difficult, very yes. difficult. Mm -hmm. well, and uh, if somebody want to be an uh, Orthodox, uh, we can, uh, for, for conversations, for conversations, we have a uh, laptop, we have uh, Wi-Fi for, for, no, for not come every, every uh, in every situation, come to the church. In every case, come to the church. You can have conversations uh, through laptops. But yes, about uh, uh, taking part in holy sacraments and every Sunday go to the church. Anyway, we must go to the to an Orthodox church. So your, your, so your advice, even if it's very far away, mm -hmm. make every effort to regularly attend church. Mm -hmm. And so um, in Cambodia, there's three main cities, Simrip, Sinukville, and of course, Phnom Penh. Mm -hmm. Um, for the longest time, there was no parish in Simrip. Mm -hmm. And so that would mean if you're an Orthodox Christian in Simrip, that might mean taking a six-hour bus ride. Yes, six hours. Mm -hmm. Once a weekend or once a month or once every season, right? You go for Lent and you go for maybe the uh, Dormition fast mm -hmm. or whatever. But make a normal effort to go to church despite the distances, mm -hmm. right? Um, <clears throat> I'll say this slowly, but... St. John Chrysostom speaks of like uh, nomads, like the people in the desert with camels, right? The Christians. And he talks about them coming to liturgy once a year because they live in the middle of the desert, right? So they essentially make a pilgrimage to get to church by Pascha. And then they go back to the desert where they're from. Mm -hmm. So the distance will determine what a regular attendance is. But it sounds like you need... We need to make the effort to regularly go to church, receive the sacraments as much as possible. The key word being possible. Do um, you have any comments on that, Father? Yes, one more, maybe yes. one more comment. That, uh, yeah, uh, now uh, I uh, come to St. Nupil and Simrip, not on Sundays, uh, uh, because every Sunday here in Phnom Penh, but on another day, Yeah, not on Sunday. Yeah. That's mean... Uh, in Sianopil and Simrip now, they don't have priests, they don't have divine liturgy on Sundays, mm -hmm. like never. Yeah. So what, what they can do? They can come uh, every Sunday and they come, glory to God, they come, uh, try to come every Sunday. And uh, they do uh, our readers service. Yes, yes, yes. Because we must honor uh, every Sunday. We must have a discipline, come to the church every Sunday. Yes. Or if 
we really in the desert <laughs> we any anyway we must uh, have this service uh, every sunday if we don't have church but if we have need need to do all what we can it's do. like tonight my wife and i will be in the countryside so we'll have to do a readers uh vesper service yes because we won't be tonight here at church for the vesper service yes 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 mm -hmm. um and so that that's an example you could do reader services and you should do so with regularity um, Zane has this question. Does father have any Russian saint whose writings he tends to go back and read frequently? Like, do you have a favorite uh, saint you read that's Russian or a favorite book that's Russian? Favorite saint, uh, Russian saint, you mean? Yes. Ah, hmm. Interesting question. I never, never uh, maybe think about it because when I think, you know, can you I... think saint, you don't think Russia? Or... Yes. <laughs> okay. Because, uh, okay, my, my children uh they all uh, what my, my my son <clears throat> in the name of saint david from thessaloniki is a great. yes yeah another daughter saint elizabeth from um, uh yeah a great princess elizabeth yeah who was killed in the revolution yeah uh, sir daughter and a, she's german uh, <laughs> yeah yes and the sir daughter uh, uh saint Evdakia, uh, this some um, woman who also was killed and in, in russia uh, my wife yeah she's saint xenia that's why uh, from saint petersburg and uh name roman so <clears throat> saint roman from <clears throat> constantinople mm. so yeah i'm i'm not sure about this question i don't think about nature right, you have to pick a russian saint which is your favorite hmm. maybe i cannot uh, give you uh um give you a quick answer but i have some days like my memory days for example i will run to the deacon in the in the day of uh center three hierarchs yeah yes yeah, and johnson basilgrain and uh, gregory the theologian also i will run to the priest in the uh, day in the memory of saint luca evangelist <coughs> sorry and uh, yeah, this is some memory day for me, or someday when our ch children was born, or yeah, something else. Yeah, so some memory days and uh, about yeah about some saints I know about uh, the, their life very clear, but about somebody else, sometimes I wonder, wow, how interesting, how interesting. I never read it before. It's so interesting, so. Mm, yeah, maybe as for me, as mm -hmm. for me, I have some memory days, memory days, and in these days, we have some saints, and I, because my heart, uh, you know, feel, feel uh, this warm feelings in this day, I pray to these uh, uh, saints with some warm feelings also, maybe <laughs> like this. So, Father, we're running out of time, so I'm going to ask some questions. Mm -hmm. And we're going to try for 40 word or less responses. Are you ready? Okay. We'll give it a shot. Have you ever heard of the councils of Yassi in 1642 and Jerusalem in 1672? And mm -hmm. if you did, are they important? <laughs> yes. I hear about this, all the councils. Unfortunately, I don't know all the details uh, from, from how, but how I remember, how I remember this uh, council was against mostly against some new teaching, which we call Protestantism now. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, we have a, a lot of patriarchs who have a sign, yes. give a sign that yes, we not believe like this. Uh, unfortunately, in, in our modern world, modern world, when somebody, some Orthodox Christians or some Orthodox priests said uh, something like Protestant, it's crazy because uh, a lot of years ago, Orthodox Church said already that we not believe like this. So the way we'd speak uh, in America would say these councils have authority. They're authoritative. Uh, uh -huh. um, does that make sense? What do you mean authority? Now authority, like an ecumenical council or a canon has authority. You have to listen to it. Ah. Right? Um, so do these councils have authority or not the same way? I think no, but I'm not sure. Uh, need, need, ask, need to ask somebody who uh, can explain us 
uh, holy canons and you can explain us about holy council but if somebody a lot of people come to this council and they don't have a w- weight or a voice uh, mm-hmm. during this come because only bishops can can uh, can yeah. have voice this can be normal if if bishops invite somebody somebody come welcome but okay. uh, they cannot cannot give their voices like uh, we are not agree this is doesn't matter you agree or not agree because okay. this is about bishops not about you so that's that's all maybe <laughs> now how about now how about this have you ever heard of western right orthodoxy western right we're going to translate this into russian one second okay ah western right or have you ever heard of it yes i i one 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 day i heard about it mm-hmm. and what do you think about it? you have any opinions no it's okay because I, I know opinion. I, I know opinion okay I know opinion uh, of another priest he said that uh, about western right mm-hmm. western right uh that uh n- normally we not use it now mm-hmm. we have it yeah but globally in the world around the world orthodox christians not use it now uh so yeah maybe that's all because uh this is uh, if not like you know sometimes somebody said about saint uh, jacob uh, liturgy but about saint jacob liturgy we don't have it we we don't have that's saint james by the way just to translate ah, i'm sorry <laughs> Jack, jacob is james but yeah that's okay yes yeah. about saint james liturgy that's mean we don't have it uh, western right we have we know how to sorry but this is not 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 um yeah mostly we not not use it but about saint, saint james for example nobody can use it because this is like some modernism or uh, we don't have the documents about this we like from our imagination create something new about western right this is not something new this is not like our imagination but mostly we not use it. Mostly we use uh, three uh, divine liturgy. Yeah. So Saint John and Saint Basil and Saint uh... Gregory the Great. Yes, Gregory. The pre-sanctified liturgy. Yes, yes, that's all. The um, what's your opinion about uh, the canon in Moscow, 1666, against icons of the Father? Because I see icons of the Father. Mm-hmm. So could you explain to people how is there a canon against it, but you see, uh. Oh icons with the father on them even some are commemorated mm-hmm. you read them on the saint's day you can see on this day we honor uh this icon and the father's on the icon so um could you explain that to the audience yes i try <laughs> i try because uh yeah uh but we, we cannot we can, first first moment mm-hmm. maybe the main moment that is that we cannot uh image godfather we cannot draw yes uh, godfather uh we can draw only our lord and holy spirit uh in the form of uh pigeon yeah uh, and, of a bird a dove or, or a dove sorry <laughs> sorry pigeon <laughs> i'm sorry because that's okay father that's okay. <laughs> and um, uh, also about uh this icon of holy trinity this is three uh, persons god father and son and god holy spirit like three angels that's all but like uh godfather like some old man no usually we not uh use it we not uh, not drawing like this and the, this canon said that we cannot do it uh, but unfortunately unfortunately we have uh, this um, uh, image a lot of image and uh, what i want to add is like the second moment uh icon of most holy theotokos which we call Dirjavne mm. in the moscow in the moscow original of this icon also have also have like godfather on the top on the top yeah and that's mean uh but but this icon is miracle uh, miracle working yes miracle working icon that's mean god if god not bless it it not will be like a uh, miracle working so icon. god is not so unbelievably offended mm-hmm. by a depiction of the father on the top that he won't work miracles through this icon yes 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 uh, but but uh, we have no one canon which can permit us permit us draw uh, godfather like an old man that's why it's better not do it not do it but sometimes it happened in some old icons 
uh, and uh, yes, God also uh, bless it, but uh, there, according and, to canons, and now, there's icons, can... and there's icons that were made by the Roman Catholics that when Russia um, brought these people back into Orthodoxy, they already had a miracle working icon, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And so God doesn't follow rules where he has to work miracles mm -hmm. only within the church or only with it, with things that are perfect. Mm -hmm. God is merciful and he works miracles through all sorts of ways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But yeah, this is not, not meaning that we can draw Godfather. But, but, like, for, like, for so example. because God <laughs> does that, uh, it doesn't mean we ignore the canon. Yes. Of we have to follow the canon. Mm -hmm. Okay, great, great, great. So, um, and again, as I said before, in America, everyone wants that line. How much could I sin until I cross the line? So that's why they're obsessed. Tell me what I could do and tell me what I can't. Mm -hmm. that, that is the Western mentality. I know it's strange to you, but that, that's the mentality that people are coming from. That's how they think. No, I, I'm not sure that this is like Western ment mentality. I think every human on the earth, each human, <laughs> Uh, maybe uh, like try to find some easy way, easy way. But uh, also, I remember some story when some my 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 uh, friend priest work bef before icon, uh, and uh, in in uh, his uh, life he have some situations, and in these situations, a situation, sorry, in this situation, difficult situation, he have five options. Mm. five yeah and no one of this option was a, a sin was a sin yeah but uh he don't want don't know what he he can choose and he pray and during prayer he understand that he must uh, uh choose the difficult difficult option yes it's very it's crazy because everybody try to find easy easy way but uh this uh, uh priest said uh, uh during the prayers i i i clear understand it that i must i must uh take the difficult way he said oh i don't want it but anyway i must do it so he he choose by himself the the um, difficult way so it's not always we we all want to do what's allowed mm -hmm. in the bare minimum yes but god says take your cross and follow me Mm -hmm. Right, so sometimes that's the hardest way. Mm -hmm. And he said that uh, if you want, uh, um, uh, that okay, it um, uh, the kingdom of heaven is like, must be like a sturm, like a, so when soldiers, yeah, uh, try to have some castle. Okay, and we must take the kingdom of heaven by force. By force, yes. yes. This, that's mean by force. That's mean we're, that we're it working will be, hard. Yeah, it will yeah. not will it, it not will be easy. Yeah, it not will be easy. I try to <laughs> teach my my children also that life is not easy. <laughs> yes, like easy life. No, no, no. Uh, we we want uh, have some rest sometimes, of course, but not all life. Like all life rest in all our life. No, no, no. How you can. How you how you will be a champion? If you want to be a champion, you must do something, <laughs> and it will be uh, hard. Sometimes very hard. Now, here's a question that might sound strange to you, but I'm just going to ask it. Now, in Russia, there's schismatics. There's the old believers, mm -hmm. and what we say in English, the true Orthodox. I don't know what you call the true or you know what the true Orthodox are. Uh -huh. Like they maybe like maybe the same like Eastern Pravoslavni, like true Orthodox. Yeah, they yes. but the the true Orthodox tend to be the ones that are not with the Russian Orthodox Church because of communism. Mm. No, but yeah, not yeah, yeah. but not the ones from like we didn't like doing the sign of the cross with three fingers versus two. Mm -hmm. Right? Like so they're different kinds. Make sense? Mm -hmm. All right. So um how many very rough estimate, very just as best you can. How many true Orthodox schismatics are there in Russia? 50,000, 500,000? Really, no, no. I can Google for a see, it, but uh, anybody can do it also. I really, you know, I, really I mean, do know. you run into their churches a lot? If you're in a Russian city, do you see their churches? No, no, no. It's uh, do you meet them casually no, walking no. about? Um, a lot of, mm -hmm. Do you run into 
Now, this is a good question because I know in Greece you could go to the supermarket and you'll see a priest there, uh-huh. right? Um, in Russia, do people regularly run to priests or are there not as many in Russia as you would see like in Greece or somewhere like that? Like, could you walk in the supermarket and run into another priest in Russia? Is that common? Mm, yes, but uh, maybe in Moscow it can be often. Often. Because, uh, yeah, because a lot of churches and you, if you are near the church or near the in a supermarket near the church or yes you can but uh but really uh, far away mm -hmm. where there's less churches Mm -hmm. it could be rare yeah it's it's more difficult uh again because we we don't have enough yes priests but what i want to say you 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 just uh um show me another one question uh that that what i want to say sometimes you see somebody and mm-hmm. you don't understand that this is a priest. Why? Because he don't have special clothes. Yeah. Uh, so that means uh, it's, uh, it's not your question. It uh, what I want to add. Yeah. That if for uh, if if it will be uh, uh, everybody will be in, a, in priest clothes, mm-hmm. maybe we will uh, meet oh. often. Because if I see somebody, sometimes I don't know that he is a priest, but sometimes he I see his eyes, and in eyes. In his eyes, understand that he is a he's priest. A priest. Yeah, but but uh, it's better not find in his eyes. It's better see that. So do you, <laughs> this is do, a you have, this is a do you have close. priest radar? Could you see priests without when they're not wearing the right clothes all the time? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so. I will have to find out with other priests that watch us whether they have priest radar. That's a good question. Um, so that being said, um, the reason I bring it up is you could run into this. Orthodox people as you walk, but the true Orthodox are so rare you you don't bump you don't bump into them you don't see them at the supermarket there are not very many in Russia. Yeah, you mean uh, true Orthodox in supermarket? Yeah, no, no. yeah. Well, like uh, so, uh, mm-hmm. the average person doesn't know a true Orthodox person. I I, I think do, no. Do you do you, know. Mm-hmm. do you know anyone that's true Orthodox in Russia? Uh, as for me, I know nobody. Nobody. Okay. Yes. <laughs> All right. So very interesting. Um, here's a weird question. Are there still starets in Russia that can read minds and stuff like that? Do they still exist? Uh, can you repeat it again? Are there starets in Russia? Are there spiritual elders that have special ah, gifts? I see. I see. Um, uh, maybe four or five days ago, I, I uh, saw some video. And uh, some priest in this video said that uh, yes, uh, some uh, now we of course have some elders, but not so, not a lot of. He said about uh, Father uh, Rafael Karelin. Uh-huh. He's from Georgia, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, about on the territory of Russia now. Yeah. Uh, he no no not, not not said something. So uh, I maybe I follow him in this question. Why? Because I don't know. But he, yeah, he have um, longer experience than me. That's mean um, he know it's better this question better than me. So uh, in in territory of Russia, um, yeah, maybe we have somebody, but um, uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, you wouldn't know where to go to find these guys. Yeah, something like oh, he's like elder. El-. No, no, somebody like popular elder. Popular, uh, um, I think we don't have. Uh, now in in Russia. Okay. Uh, yeah. So no Saint John of Kronstadt's anywhere. Yes. Somebody like. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very good. It's uh. We have this question from Elijah. What are the effects of the strain or the schism between Moscow and Constantinople? Could I, as a reader under Constantinople, receive communion in a Russian church, or can lay people of each church commune in the other? So his question is this. Elijah's in the Greek church. Let's mm-hmm. say he visits Cambodia. Would he be able to receive communion if he went to visual and confessed and went to liturgy on Sunday? I see, I see. The answer is yes, uh, but with some <laughs> comment. If in case, in case of all when, okay, in case when uh, the whole church follow some heresy or go to schism, it's better not support this church and wait and go to another uh, local Orthodox church and wait, wait 
when it will uh, finished. This is because uh, uh, we can, but if some priest from Constantinople Church, some priest, yes, who th who said that yes, I, I uh, yeah, I am in from our Constantinople Church, so we cannot serve together. Why? Because uh, uh, bishops uh, uh, support schism. This is a uh, uh, death thing. This is a death thing. And so, I would it be fair to say you can't celebrate liturgy with clergy mm -hmm. that are Greek. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. um, but the lay people, if they're in Cambodia and not in a city with a Greek church, mm -hmm. that would not be held against the lay people. So a lay person could go to liturgy here. That's Greek. Yes, yes. But uh, every time I try to explain why uh, we uh, have these rules for not serve together, for don't have conversation, Eucharistic conversation together. Why? Because of because of schism, or sometimes it's about uh, heresy. So, because this is the death thing, and that's mean uh, this is not some traditions, different traditions. No, this is about dogmatics, and this is very very serious. Serious. So let me. What is the dogmatic issue that separates the Greeks and the Russians right now? I'm sorry. Is there a dogmatic issue that ah. that separates the Greeks and the Russians right now, I or know. is the schism not dogmatic? I know about, about Constantinople. No. Yes. No, about the Greece. Oh, sorry. So Constantinople yeah. specifically. Specific. Is there a dogmatic issue that separates them? Mm -hmm. uh, last 100 years, they have a specific teaching, which uh, every year it's more and more uh, neo papism. Yes, something like. Like this, because this is it's terrible. It's terrible, and uh, yeah. Uh, and so, if a, um, and so neo papism, the idea that the ecumenical patriarch is like the Pope of Rome, yes, that's a heresy. Yes, yes. And so, if someone who was from a, uh, from a Constantinople church came here, mm -hmm. you would just want to make sure they didn't believe in this heresy before you communed them. Would that be accurate? Uh, I, I or would... you wouldn't ask them. Maybe ask or maybe not. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, um, about, about and uh, yeah, maybe ask about this or maybe ask about. Uh, do you support this schism or yeah? It's, we must. It must be maybe personal, personal conversation okay. with everybody. So it depends if they walk in here, um, and they don't think about neo papism. They don't think about the schism. You wouldn't be concerned. But if they were very adamant about the schism, very serious about neo-papism and believed in it, that would be a problem. I think yes, because okay. it's, we, it, this is like a, a, uncorrect, a personal faith. Yes. Maybe something like yes. this. So we got this question, Father. Um, I'm a catechumen in an OCA parish. You know, you know OCA? I don't yes. Know. Okay. So yes. mm -hmm. um, the church has saved my life and I'm about to be received by chrismation despite everything, because this is a door that Christ has opened for me as best as I can tell. Um, so his question is, is it okay that they're not baptizing him? They're just chrismating him. Is that okay? Yes. If church said uh, it only uh, holy sacrament of chrismation for you, it's okay. Because, so it's, uh, the, it's the bishop's judgment. In that case, yes, yes, yes. This is his responsibility. If he said only uh, chrismation, yes, chrismation, it's enough. But yeah, it yeah, it's a personal responsibility of every every bishop. Or no, what priest. if it's a bad bishop? Let's say his previous baptism was among a heretical group that didn't believe in the Holy Trinity. Mm -hmm. They only baptized them with one full immersion, one dunk under the water. Uh huh. All right, a Baptist. All right, so let's say the bishop says, I don't think that's a big deal. We're just going to chrismate you. I see. Um, does he have any reason to be worried because the bishop made that decision? Or is that all the bishop's problem and not his problem? No, I think in every personal, every, uh, personal case, God show us. But if we, if we see... Holy canons, and if in holy canons we can read, it must be three times. Yeah. But it was only one time. 
no one bishop can say it's a not a problem. It's a problem <laughs> because. But what if the bishop about... ignored the canon? Like we do have a canon that says that. Um, about oh. this canon, no, 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 of course, because it's not like a, a local little canon, like about. Uh, okay, like is a canon that woman cannot cannot uh, be in in one home with a priest yeah. uh, or with the monks, but sometimes it can be some pilgrims, and sometimes we don't have another home. And uh, yes, uh, from uh, in different rooms they can be. Uh, so this is like, oh, we are uh, not follow this canon, but this have logic because we don't have another so in these situations. So yeah. sometimes we are a little looser with the canons because it's not possible to be strict with the canons. Yes, but in the case of holy baptism, it's a holy baptism is the first sacrament in our church. Uh, in the, if, if uh, in holy canons is three times, it must be three times, of course, mm -hmm. not one time, not two times. But there are bishops that ignore that canon. They they think that they we call it economia. I'm sure that translates the same for you, mm -hmm. right? Via economia, that we don't have to receive people with those sort of baptisms. Does does that? So that bishop made the wrong decision. We all right I think is wrong. now. Does the person who's under that bishop have a problem because the bishop made a bad decision? Yeah, sometimes it's happened, of course, because uh, uh, we are all. So what people. should that? So what should that person do ah. if that bishop made a bad decision? No, because over every bishop will have a. Uh, but I know how it's in a Russian church. But I don't know how in another church. Uh, we have a church judgment. Yeah, uh, a church judgment either in other bishops, in other bishops, not not one. But uh, two, three more, um, uh, yeah. A synod. So the synod should judge the yeah, bad like bishop. Synod, yeah. Yes. But what if that synod doesn't? Uh, sorry? What What if the synod, the council of bishops, mm -hmm. just doesn't judge this bishop doing bad things? They just let him do it. It's yeah. very common in America. That's why Americans ask this question. I think not only in America. Sometimes it's happened in every country. The Father Pisces told me, uh -huh. he said, nobody follows the canons unless they want you in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, like, what should the average person like me, mm -hmm. should we worry about what the bishop is doing if they're making wrong decisions like that? We we all have a uh, brain. Yeah. <laughs> so that's why we must use it. And uh, sometimes this is not our responsibility. But sometimes, in a case of schism or heresy of the whole church, is yeah. our responsibility already. So, what's his responsibility with baptism, if any? Uh, does he does he have responsibility with saying to the priest, "I want to be baptized," even though you want to just chrismate me, or doesn't he? Maybe in the in the in, okay in the case of one times, yes, uh, it must be. On my opinion, it must be. It must be holy baptism and. Do you have something pastoral to say to the person with the question if the church, because the priest might refuse because the bishop doesn't let him. I will not rebaptize you, even though you have a, a baptism with just one dunk. I understand. Uh, and but... so does that person have anything to worry about? Because he, he asked and the priest told him no. I, I think, I think, uh, yeah. This is a no. In this case, it's a problem, and maybe need to find another priest who find will, another priest. Mm, who okay. Do it. From on my opinion, on my opinion, because I never, I never heard about this in like in this situation. Yeah. Like no, very like, common in America. <laughs> because in three, if three times, okay, no, but we'll also can have some uh, something. Strange. What if but, they're, what if they're no, already okay. in the church? Oh, sorry. What what if they were received wrong? They're not reading all these books. Like they're they're not reading this, mm -hmm. um, and then they listen to this video and they realize they chrismated me. I've had communion for five years, but I should have been baptized instead of just chrismated. Does that person have anything to worry about? Mm. No, no. It must be personal case. I think. Uh, okay, just like in Simrib, not so uh not so long time ago mm -hmm. it was in december our uh, old woman parishioner in simri yeah she's russian and yeah she uh after divine liturgy come to me and i know her five years during five years mm -hmm. and before these five years she already all her life he tried to go to the church 
And I, I explained to her that we must take apart the holy holy sacraments. So she said, okay, and have preparation and take apart the in. And, and after these five years, five years I know her, she asked me, Father, do you know I was baptized or not? I said, wow, uh, what do you mean? Because it was in uh, Soviet Union and uh, um, it was some woman at home. They, are, uh, they don't, ha don't have a priest. Yeah. And we really don't know how this baptized. They don't know how they did it. Yes. yes. Might have been right, might have been wrong. Yes, yes. Okay. I asked another brother, I said, yeah, sure, we can baptize her again because we know if if uh, it was holy baptism already, no, nothing happened. So they corrected the baptism. She mm -hmm. might have been baptized already, mm -hmm. but there was some question, mm -hmm. and the bishop um, blessed her to be baptized again. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Okay. Well, because because in in this situation, and I that's the bishop her. in Southeast Asia, the one in Singapore. Uh, you, who, you mean who, of our diocese? Yeah. Did was that done in this diocese? Ah, no, uh, um, uh, Metropolitan Sergius. He yeah. is our uh, our bishop now. Yeah. Of our diocese. So uh, some canonical questions must uh, be addressed to him. Of yeah. Course. Mm -hmm. Oh, so maybe I'm confused the story. So this woman in Simrip, was she baptized again in Simrip? Or was this something that happened back in Russia? No, no. I baptized her already. Okay. Uh, in uh, Sianukvil. Okay. In, uh, because it was uh, uh, Theophany, Feast of Theophany. Yep. And I also baptized her. And so your, so your bishop, did you have to ask the bishop for permission? Uh, uh, no, in this case. Yeah. In, in this case, uh, it's like... Um, how to say it? Maybe in this case, not so 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 difficult case. So uh, for not uh, worry, Bishop, in any questions, uh, I ask only another priest, elder okay. priest. This, yeah. this enough, that was enough for this situation. And I baptized her because uh, we don't know. Nobody well, knows. <laughs> was she communing before then? You mean uh, was she taking holy communion before yeah, that? Of course, yes, yeah. During five years and uh, see, I have to admit, I'm surprised. I would think that someone who's taking communion for years and then is not sure of their baptism, mm -hmm. you would have to ask the bishop for permission to baptize them. Ah. Mm -hmm. Am I am I confusing some part of this story? Huh. Uh, you know, um, I no. Firstly, I ask another priest, yep. but they said this is not a not a like a difficult question. For so it was pastoral. It's like she's not sure. Just do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's that's mean. Yeah, because another sometimes it's another questions about especially I don't know why I know why <laughs> about marriage. Somebody not marriage about the documents about the nations about something. And you do a marriage in the church. Mm -hmm. And this is sometimes it's really difficult questions because uh, where is your true wife? We not don't have conversation during billion years. Okay, but who is it? This is my new wife. You you have official marriage now, so this can be a real difficult situation because a lot of uh -huh. a lot of details. A lot and that goes and those go to the bishop. Mm -hmm. I see. Interesting. So it's like in America, it's the opposite. Uh -huh. <laughs> There's this hyper obsession about the baptism, but the marriage stuff, whatever. <laughs> oh, I see. <laughs> so. No, no. I, I just in every situation, I try uh, I try to see how many details. If it's like simple situation. Uh, understand for everybody mm -hmm. okay but sometimes it's have some uh, uh how to say it? uh underwater stones yeah i don't know how we say it in english something a lot of like iceberg who has only yes uh, there's more see. than you could see yes yes yeah, a yeah. lot of details so need to have some uh, not only advice from somebody or maybe official decision of our of our bishop about some uh, difficult situations. Okay, mm -hmm. so here's a good here's a good question because I think they just built the church. Have you encountered any Oriental Orthodox in Cambodia? Any Egyptians? Any Ethiopians? And encounter? You mean uh, I can't even meet them. Have they do? Ah yes. Have any attended this church before? Yes, uh, a lot of times, especially in Phnom Penh, yeah. Ethiopian. Oriental Orthodox Church and uh, Coptic sometimes come to us. But uh, what I want to add to this question, yeah. maybe everybody know it, but maybe not. They are they, not in communion with us. Yes, because they call uh, themselves 
Oriental Orthodox. Yeah. That's mean not Orthodox, but only so, Oriental Orthodox. So they could come, important. they could attend, but they're not going to commune. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, is there, uh, I think they, the Egyptians, the Coptics built a church. Is that done yet in Phnom Penh? Mm -hmm. Do you even know? I, I know that maybe they won't, but they already built something or not. I don't know. Okay. I know that they won't. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah. I just want to know where their restaurants are. Uh, I love Egyptian food. Mm -hmm. So we have this from Jack. He says, why do Orthodox fault the rest of the believing Christian world for believing the filioque when so many fathers, East and West, taught the filioque? So it's kind of a loaded question, Father. Um, did the fathers teach the filioque, that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son? Uh, you uh, question did the holy fathers teach about filioque? Yes, yes. <laughs> for me it's a, a question who, who, okay. yes, because uh, show me somebody <laughs> because uh, I, I'm not specialist of holy fathers, but yeah. uh, I know fa like Father George Maximov, he's a, he, he is a specialist yeah. of uh, he read a lot of holy fathers. Mm -hmm. That's mean, uh, if he need, need to ask him, but I know. Uh, what answer will be? Nobody of Holy Fathers teach uh, stretch about Filioque. All right. So, and you can say you don't know, but how about Saint Augustine? Ah, uh huh. So maybe need to uh, read him very clear. But uh, when we not, you know, it's a maybe it's a different bit between different between when we teach about strict teach about Filioque or about uh, uh, that everybody will be saved, or something like this, some like Saint Gregory, this, and uh, yeah, but it, it can be like our oh, well, if if we not hear hear nobody, uh, not no one advice, and we are strict teach about this and continue and continue, and Holy Church said to us this is wrong, and we continue it. This is the heresy. But in the case of uh, some saints. Who have some uh, maybe only incorrect opinion. This is yeah. not a heresy. This this can be some incorrect opinion. He think like this, but if somebody will uh, tell him that this is not true, okay, this is not true. So this is not a heresy. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like you're saying it's possible. You're not sure, but it's possible that Saint Augustine or Saint Gregory of Nyssa had a opinion or a few opinions that weren't correct. Mm -hmm. But what matters is what all the saints teach, not one or two opinions from one or two saints. Is that accurate? Yes. Like and, the, I'm sorry, like and the Paisios uh, from Holy Mountain. Yes. Also, he has some uh, incorrect opinions because uh, he like only believed to people who come to, but some Protestant come to him. So that's this is not not mean that he is not a saint or he was a heretic. Of course. It's only like some incorrect opinion, and if somebody else come to him and um, show him right opinion, yeah. it will be uh, no one problem, I think. So you're saying uh, if the saints have wrong opinions, um, what we would believe is if they were corrected or taught from someone else saying, oh, no, this is the way it is, they go, oh, okay. We, they, they would correct themselves. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, because uh, uh, in, in the case of heresy, we don't want it because this is our pride and we don't want to correct our, uh, ourselves. But in the case of unright opinion, it's normal situation. Everybody can have unright opinion. I know that, uh, and he said you haven't read that much of, Saint, of the, some of these saints, but like St. Augustine writes in the book on the Trinity mm -hmm. that like if he has some wrong opinion, please correct him. Right, like he actually writes that in the book because he says, you know, I'm going as best as I can. We don't have knowledge of the Greek language, and you know, if there's anything I did wrong, you know, I'm sorry. Like he actually writes that in the book, mm -hmm. so it's interesting you you point that out. So, Father, it's we're over two hours, so um, I have a little thing down here that says, if this show has blessed you, please go to OrthodoxChristianTheology.com/slash/donate. It's where people could give money to the church in Cambodia, which means you. So, okay. <laughs> so um, maybe you could tell the audience if they, you know, with their donations, how could that help the church in Cambodia? You mean uh, what ways? Uh, or, well, you know, well, how, how they send money. Yeah, if they yeah. send us money, 
in the church in Cambodia? How can I help the church in Cambodia? Ah, so so can I can I uh, ask again? You mean how to donate or how it will help? Us how it will help? Okay, so for example, uh, our churches, glory to God, they are in Sanopil and, and Phnom Penh. They are uh, too big. It's uh, around twenty meters. Twenty meters. That's mean uh, we need uh, repairs. This is. I think this is the most the biggest part of our financial. Financial. Right, the biggest financial problem oh, yes. is that the Repair. people that built the churches were so generous. They built very big churches. Glory to God. But and now we must now we be... gotta fix big churches. <laughs> yes, it's 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 right because of a climate. Here yeah. is in Phnom Penh, it's more easy climate for, for uh, I mean for buildings, but not, not in Sanupil. There there are or uh, there, maybe yeah, maybe there we have uh, problems uh, every two or three years. No, not every ten years, but every two or three Big years. Problems. Mm -hmm, take problems. Uh, of so you were telling me a... you were telling me that people were taking a week off from work from the parish and fixing the church. Like they visit the church, they fix it. You mm -hmm. show me a picture of them fixing yes. the roof. Yes. Um. So the people are working for free, but do they need money for like concrete for paint? Like what? What do they need money for? No. Uh. Yeah. It's materials. Uh, if we want be uh, good quality, it must be uh, good materials, and also they not not work um, for free. They uh, uh, not not take a lot of money from the church, but they must take something because this also is there are some prisoners. hard work. Yes, okay, if, I see. if they are our prisoners, they take something because this is hard work. I mean, uh, really hard work on the sun, on the roof. Yes, not like something inside inside uh, with air condition. So. This is the biggest part, financial part. I mean, also what another parts. This is the mission for printing, uh, translate something. Then we must correct it. Then we must print it. Uh, this is also not a not a few money. So sometimes it's a lot, a lot of money. Uh, uh, it's usually like three thousand dollars to translate to print like a book. Ah, no, yeah, it must be. We must see. What what kind of book? If it bo big book, it will be uh, yeah, it will be expensive. It will be expensive, uh, and also also we must um, uh, how to say it? Our da daily life, like every month, every month, financial electricity, uh, uh, water, this that. So yes, uh, here is in Cambodia. Glory to God. Uh, our parishioners, every parish, I don't know, every parishioner help, uh, but uh, we don't have a lot of parishioners. Or if some new parishioners like Khmer, when they come, they, 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 mm -hmm, they cannot help us uh, by our financial part. They cannot, they are poor. So uh, that's mean we must find somebody else if we want to continue uh, here. Yeah, sometimes my head... Uh, have a cadage about finance but yeah in maybe abroad we we all have <laughs> have problems with this but uh if somebody I, anytime i said this if somebody can help a little please i i am glad of, of any any donation so i'm gonna make time. an appeal directly to the audience one dollar five dollars five hundred dollars every little bit counts because everything costs money here. Um, this is a new mission. Um, and so we ask for your generous financial support. So if this show has blessed you, um, if the, we don't do um, with the questions, they call them super chats, meaning you give the money for the answer of questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Everything here was answered for free by Father Roman. <laughs> so out of the generosity of your heart, if some answer here has blessed you, we ask to freely give so you may freely receive grace from God. Um, and you could do so at orthodoxchristiantheology.com slash donate. Um, I also ask people, if this has inspired you to do missionary work, to seriously pray and reflect to become a missionary, whether it's here in Cambodia, whether it's in Granada, wherever it's anywhere, 
whether it's going the streets in your own city, nearby city in the United States, uh, wherever you're watching this, is to seriously consider missionary work. I personally, obviously, Father, support the work in Cambodia. My, 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 my heart is that you watching this will consider either go on vacation in Cambodia, do a little help for the church. Mm. Um, figure out, maybe I want to stay in Cambodia, right? Don't Just don't go. Visit first. <laughs> <laughs> right and find out will i do this especially if you're young you're 22 years old get a job teaching english you get paid you can live here pay your bills and you could do missionary work these That's are true. things people have to seriously consider um in fact i won't say his name but like we have uh, a new he's a catechumen now or is he just an inquirer um I mean, like the, the head of school the ah. head of school i won't mm -hmm. say his name you know who I'm talking about? Yes, yes. Yeah, right. Um, some people make very good money teaching English in Cambodia and mm -hmm. working in schools. Very good money. He doesn't speak any Khmer. Yes. Right? So you could come here and really know nothing about the country. Just have a heart to work and to serve. Yes. And this is something you have to reflect upon and consider. But not everyone is called to this. We need prayers. We need financial support. We need workers. We need everything. Anything else? Uh, after everything, what else <laughs> we, we, we need more? Everything is right answer because uh, somebody thinks that I cannot help. Uh, I cannot. You can help. Everybody can help. Everybody can help. Uh, with, you know, if, uh, can I, some, somebody, somebody come? Can I, can I help something? Anytime you can help anything because uh, this is not like, uh, little church like church in home a big church and uh, a lot of work welcome welcome uh we, uh, we you uh, can help with your brain you can translate and you can uh, teach our neighbors uh, english or yeah you know a lot of but wasn't that beautiful like my wife and i are visiting and the kids randomly walk into us and like are you teaching us english now and we're like yeah we didn't plan on doing it. They what? They asked, and then they said, "This was before we did English class." We said, "Do you want to come to church?" They said, "Yes," and they went to vigil. Remember? Yes, yes. And then they went to vigil, and so it's all about giving people the opportunity to come to Christ, to see that the church is here, to know that we're Christians. Um, but we need people willing to serve, people willing to help, and so that is our appeal here. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, Father, do you have uh, any uh, last words, parting words for um, the audience? Mm, maybe I just want to say uh, uh, thank, uh, thanks everybody who already helped us. Yes, definitely. Because yes. Uh, a, a lot of people already help us. Uh, so this is, uh, I, I just uh, want to say big thanks. And I pray for uh, God save uh, save you all, because uh, all your help is uh, really uh, how to say it need 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 for Orthodox Church in Cambodia. So uh, very very big thanks for everybody for every help every help. This is how we live here because somebody think some donations from uh, uh, um, how to say it. Some special donations from uh, from Diaz says, oh, no, 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 no. Everybody must find by himself. I love this system. Uh, why I love? Because uh, it's a personal, personal re relationship with somebody. So thank you so much again. Well, Father, thank you for everything that you do. You give uh, fully of yourself. I know you don't like hearing this. Um, you have a wonderful family. Um, and so you do this with kids, a wife with so many things. Um, so you have my sincere gratitude. Um, and uh, I will uh, just express that for the audience. So now it's recorded. <laughs> I can't take it back. <laughs> I see. <laughs> and so um, I will uh, call it a day here and I will end this show as I end all of them by quoting Jesus Rock. Fight to the death for the truth and the Lord God will fight for you. God bless you. Have a great day.